Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Well, police investigators have quashed rumours of an illegal dinner party of North West Hospital workers. The unverified claims were said to be behind an outbreak of coronavirus, but it's now been discounted. To take us through this development, our reporter Michelle Wisby joins us now. Good evening, Michelle. What is it that uh, investigators had to say? Kim, police released a statement late today saying they have been unable to find evidence of that illegal dinner party. It was a widely spread rumour, even shared by Australia's top medical officer, who later had to retract those comments. The Premier quickly tried to shut down the allegations, but did order a police investigation. And with the results of that release today, police have thanked the healthcare workers who helped them in the course of this inquiry. The Northwest remains the epicentre of Tasmania's coronavirus outbreak. Here's a close look now at what we learnt throughout the day. The far northwest tip of Tasmania now on coronavirus alert. Three cases linked to the Burney Hospital's outbreak confirmed in the Circular Head region. There are three people in the uh, Circular Head area uh, who are all close contacts of each other. Uh, but they have an epidemiological link back to the Northwest Regional Hospital. The mobile clinic is going to remain in Smithton today and it will remain in that location while there continues to be need. Some people have thought that it's just my runny nose, it's just my seasonal um, uh, rhinitis, you know, I'm reacting to something in the environment or in the garden. Um, well, maybe you are, but please go and get tested if you've got mild symptoms. Overnight, four more cases were confirmed, all in the northwest. But as ambulances travel along the coast to fill the gap of hospital closures, paramedics say they've been left feeling exhausted and unsupported. Paramedics are doing enormous hours uh, at the moment, particularly in the northwest, uh, not only over and above their normal shift hours, but also working uh, on their days off. And, uh, you know, that's not sustainable. We are providing more staff, we're providing more um, uh, vehicles, we're providing more aeromedical support. We also provide cleaning services. But I do understand that there is an increased workload and I thank them for uh, their hard work during this time. A report into the cluster of cases has been completed and will be released publicly this week. The government is also promising an independent investigation when the situation is stable. While some other states have started easing restrictions, here the Premier says we'll be more cautious and gradual. The last thing that I'm certain that Tasmanians want and certainly the last thing that I want to see occur is that we put at risk Tasmanian lives because we move too quickly. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania is set to resume Category 2 and 3 elective surgeries in coming days, with federal restrictions officially lifted from today. The state government is working with clinicians to manage the wait list, with some services like IVF resuming. IVF facilities back in operation after coronavirus precautions forced a shutdown of elective surgeries. We have moved on to doing uh, Zoom conferences uh, and telephone consultations uh, and that's working quite well. Uh, but we cancelled all our cycles. It's been a tense few weeks for families across the state, with the ban on non-essential procedures impacting hundreds of IVF patients. Clinics now rescheduling and recommencing their procedures. Very, very relieved because um, they were really quite distressed. We had a number of patients who were really quite distressed uh, and they're obviously very, very relieved. The same relief yet to be felt by those on Category 2 and 3 elective surgery wait lists across the state, with the government still working on the best way to roll out procedures. And we are very aware of the impact that it does have on our patients across Tasmania. We want to see as much elective surgery done as possible. However, it needs to be done prudently and it has to be done on clinical advice. The Medical Association says it's cautiously optimistic about the lifting of restrictions. It's supportive of a measured approach to take into account the stretched resources in the north and northwest and the availability of protective equipment for staff. It's, it's not a, a one solution fits all. We'll probably see more regional solutions where you have zones where there's little or no coronavirus where activity might be able to be increased, where we've got the appropriate resources to do so. And we're going to respond to their advice to ensure that what we do is safe for the patients, is safe for the clinicians, but is also safe for our broader community while we deal with this pandemic. 
The Health Minister is expected to outline a plan for recommencement later this week. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. A prison officer has been injured in an alleged incident with an escaped prisoner late yesterday afternoon. Police say a 21-year-old man escaped custody at the Royal Hobart Hospital around 5.15. Multiple units responded to the incident, arresting the man nearby only minutes later. The officer received non-life-threatening injuries. An elderly woman has suffered a terrifying ordeal when she woke to find three burglars inside her home at 3am yesterday. Police say the woman was home alone at her remote property in Caveside near Mole Creek when the trio broke in and stole jewellery, watches, a phone and a computer. The offenders were not armed and the resident was not physically injured. Crime investigators are hoping to speak to anyone who saw suspicious activity in the area at the time of the burglary. Tasmania and Victoria shared equal top spot for best performing economy in the nation, our best result in more than a decade. Comsec's latest State of the State report found Tasmania's strengths were in new dwellings, retail spending and dropping the unemployment rate. But the findings reflect data from before the pandemic. The Premier says there will be more challenges on the way, but he's hoping a strong economy will provide Tasmania with a good base to bounce back. Instead of picking up their children from school, parents have picked up an entire curriculum ahead of the new term. Thousands of mums and dads will oversee schoolwork from tomorrow as classrooms move into the living room. We're all learning how to do things differently, even when it comes to learning. We have a number of first year teachers. I don't think they could have ever believed that this was what the start of term two looked like. The queue stretched onto the street as Riverside Primary School handed out hundreds of homeschool kits. Who wants chips with the order? Ice cream? From tomorrow, parents like Beck Crawford will be at Teaching's Coalface as Tasmanians are urged to ring the school bell at home. It's been pretty smooth. We've been lucky. We've been able to juggle our work to do the homeschooling, you know, pretty comfortably. Beck and her husband will split teaching duties for their three children, who say they'll miss the real thing. I love it a lot, and it's sort of sad being at home all the time. I think they're just really looking forward to having some interaction with their teachers again and their classmates. The normally bustling after-school pickup will be far quieter than usual. From tomorrow, the bulk of those still coming to school are expected to be the children of essential service workers who can't do their job from home. Schools in the northwest will remain closed until next week as part of an effort to contain the region's virus outbreak. Each school has um, approached this in slightly different ways and really it's the context of their community, what's going to work for their community, but I think We've all worked so hard across Tasmania to support um, the children in Tasmania. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. And if you're an adult learner, this next story might help. The University of Tasmania has curated a handful of free courses to help people cope with the challenges of the virus. Available to anyone, the Wellbeing Toolkit includes topics on financial budgeting, mental health, healthy eating and even gardening. So I wanted to make sure we had a, a portfolio that was supporting all the different ways people are experiencing challenges um, and the opportunities that they're taking as well in these times. The university says each online module has more than 10 hours of content for people to study at their own pace. A Tasmanian animal charity is pleading for help after a dramatic drop in donations has led to a mounting debt bill. Rescue Cat Safe Haven needs thousands of dollars to keep its doors open. As many businesses feel the claws of COVID-19, this organisation is as busy as ever. There's still so many surrenders, um, so many strays, lots of dumping um, is happening at the moment, which is a bit frustrating. But as the number of rescued cats grows, the charity's bottom line does the opposite. Vet bills have climbed to more than $15,000. We've got a 60% drop at the moment with our donations, so obviously everyone's hit really hard by the virus. The safe haven has not yet received government funding and needs to raise $7,500 from the public to survive. Without it, forgotten felines may remain on the streets and at worst the centre's doors could close for good. Definitely very stressful. Um, our volunteers have felt it as well. They feel the stress that we have. Management are appealing for small donations online. We're tax deductible, so anything over $5 um, we can give a uh, tax receipt. 
On the other side of the animal kingdom, the guide dogs organisation has also been hard hit by the effects of the virus. It urgently needs $150,000 in community contributions to keep the program alive. An emergency fundraising campaign called Poor Party has been launched online. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. The Tasmanian-based Antarctic Division has been bolstered by funding commitments for key projects. The federal government is launching a 10-year strategic plan worth almost $3 billion. It includes funding for Australia's new icebreaker, Antarctic research station upgrades and investigations into a new year-round aerodrome on the icy continent. We will prepare action items uh, to those points uh, that will uh, move uh, the strategic plan forward in the first five years. $50 million has also been pledged to construct a new research station on Macquarie Island. Good evening. Pretty fresh conditions today as we fell in behind a cold front. Some rain over the west, central and south. Strathgordon, 17 millimetres, the highest fall. Hobart, 19 degrees. Launceston, Burnie and Devonport, 17. Friendly beaches, the high with 20. However, most temperatures sat between 1 and 5 degrees below average. St Helens, 18. Grove, Ooze and the Island, 17. Lowhead, 16 today. And Strawn, 15. Low cloud over western and southern regions. The ripple cloud elsewhere is mountain wave activity. The frontal cloud band now off to the east of Tasmania. That extends northwards to northern New South Wales. The next cold front has cloud over the Southern Ocean. The cloud over WA is due to a trough. Tomorrow, high-pressure systems will be over the Tasman Sea and well to the west. Cold front with multiple troughs and developing low centres is heading our way. Northwesterly winds at 20 to 30 knots over the west and south, up to 25 knots elsewhere. They'll tend more northerly in the afternoon. Swells to 4 metres. Strong wind warning, that's for waters south of St Helens Point all the way down and back up around to Stanley. Tuesday, for Hobart, a top of 21 and partly cloudy. Partly cloudy for Adventure Bay, Terralea, an early shower, 15 degrees. Launceston tomorrow, a high of 17 degrees. Light morning shower, Devonport a light shower or two and 17 and Bridport, similar sort of weather. Burnie tomorrow, a shower or two and 16, 17 the top for Strawn with light showers clearing and Marawar partly cloudy, 16 the high. St Helens tomorrow, 19 and partly cloudy, Swansea 19 as well and 19 for White Mark on Flinders. On Wednesday, showers over the north and also the west, they'll extend statewide late morning, Hobart a high of 20, showers sticking on through Thursday and snow expected to 800 metres, many centres expecting tops of around 15 degrees and on Friday, showers again later in the day for the east, snow to 700 metres early temperatures dropping another couple of degrees as well. Not so cold over the mainland, the coolest being Melbourne's 20, but it'll be sunny there. A shower or two and 23 in Adelaide, early fog clearing from Canberra, showers for Sydney and Brisbane. Partly cloudy, Hobart 14 at the moment, 13 in Launceston, Devonport 13 degrees. Partly cloudy tomorrow, Kim, and then messy for the rest of the week. And getting cold. Thank you, Murph. That's your news for now. I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night. <laughs>